who would raise a lot of issues with me saying that. And they would raise these issues from a bunch of different perspectives. Some people would say that, hey, a woman is a woman, and it could be a white woman of European descent, it could be a Latina woman of Hispanic descent, whatever that is, that's still a European in my mind. It could be an Asian woman. It doesn't matter what kind of women. Why would you say black women are the best? That's divisive and that's wrong. That's what some people would say. Okay, so I, I can't talk about the black women that way. All right, some people would say, the hell wrong with you? Black women, they loud, they ghetto, they, 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 don't, they don't listen, they don't want to be submissive. All they do is talk back, and they just, ooh, why in the hell would you say the white one? That's another, that's that's another perspective that you might get. Some people want to use we're all the same. Some people are flat out hostile toward the black woman. So if you say something like the black woman is the best, they'll get mad from a different angle. But let me ask you this: Gucci man, young thug, young jock, baby, and Lil Wayne can call black women bitches, hoes, and sluts. And nappy head hoes like Dunn Imus, and they won't say, those same people won't say nothing. Do you see? Do you see how this works here? If I come along and say the black woman is the best, I'm being divisive. If I come along and say black woman, bitch, get out on the floor, and oh, that ain't no problem. Can you see how that's hypocritical, Zeke? Mm -hmm. How? 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 How so? Because they come to. Uh, the, uh, go against the positive things as if they just remain neutral. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They never defend when somebody says something negative about black women. Baby, do you see? That's why. I, that's why I always have Zeke. And let me remind you guys that this is Vern Jackson, founder and president of the Building Powerful Minds Youth Empowerment Program, the most dynamic and impactful youth empowerment program in the country that focuses on giving black youth knowledge of self and all the skills and resources necessary to be successful, build families, and rebuild the black community in this hostile environment. Well, why did I have to mention all that? Because as long as there has been a BPM, Zeke was there, right? So Zeke got more black nationalist training than a lot of a lot of children, but you can't call him a child no more because he just graduated high school. He will be attending FSCJ. He will be majoring in criminal justice, and he plans to go into law enforcement. Now, is that contradictory with the aims of BPM? No. I wish we had a few more good brothers in the police department because I know some good brothers there that don't shoot people. <laughs> they never discharge their guns. They know how to de-escalate or they can do it with these. And I'm telling you right now, Zeke can do it with these. So, uh, yes. For as long as there's been a BPM, Zeke was there. Now, let's get back to these black women. They, won't, they don't want me to talk about how the black woman is the best, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm not scared. So let me, let me tell you a personal story about what I saw a black woman do. I had a very, very tough case, and it looked like my client was going to go to prison for at least 30 years. He was a black man. When he came to me, he came with his uh, girlfriend, his black girlfriend. He had been falsely accused of a very vicious crime, 100% falsely accused. I saw it from day one. His black girlfriend had helped to get the money up to bond him out of jail, gotten him out of jail. She went on to the internet and found me uh, as his attorney. She called me to hire me. She drove him here from another city for us to meet. She stuck with him over two years, right? As we took depositions, found witnesses, gathered evidence, and prepared to attack this case at trial, she stuck with him the whole way. And partway through, they broke up, right? They weren't even a couple anymore. But even though they weren't a couple, she stuck by his side 135%, right? All the way to trial. Well, no plea deals yet. 
the state didn't want to move him. My guy wasn't going to take any plea. He was innocent. We had to go all the way to trial. The black woman was at trial, right? They weren't a couple anymore. The black woman was there at trial, and she was quarterbacking every step of the way telling me what to say. And I'm like, woman, stop telling me what to do. I know what to do. I'm a lawyer. But everything she told me to say to the jury was right. And everything she told me to say to the jury was effective. And I really believe, and I was there, so I know, that her impact on the case was magnificent, right? She could have, when things got rough, I mean, you got to come up with money to go through a whole trial. It's expensive, it's stressful, you lose sleep, you don't want to eat. It's a rough thing, but she stuck with this brother. She stuck with him, even though they weren't together anymore. And we won the trial, and I got to give her credit because the arguments and tips and tactics and techniques that she gave me were 100% on, but she refused to see him go down for something that he didn't do, and it didn't matter to her if they were together or not. She wasn't going to let that black man go down, and she was going to be there to support him, and she was there to support me. That's what I saw a black woman do. Right, Zeke? What you think about that? That particular situation. Overall, what does it mean? Oh, that just um, I I, I understand it. That's just a, a illustration of how dedicated the black woman has always been to the black man. Absolutely dedicated. Now Zeke just made me think of another point. When the Europeans and the Arabs came to Africa to raid and to rob and to enslave, they often said, "I don't know what's that. What's going on with that?" When the Europeans came to rob and enslave in Africa, they often said that when you take the black man, when you can get him chained up and ready to go, you don't have to worry about chaining up the black woman. She gonna go with that man. Right? Well, that meant she was going into hell. Because the West is hell. The West was hell for the black man. There was nothing good here. Nothing. There's nothing good about slavery. That means that that woman was willing to march into hell with her man. Right? So, as we start this discussion, do you see why I said the black woman is the best? I, I want to cover that. I want to cover that topic right now. All right. Everybody get a load of this book. I done referenced it in about every discussion that we've had. You know, we're just getting started. One and done. We're just getting started. The Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. Professor Williams spent about 15 to 20 years in Africa writing that one book. Right? And I'm going to reference it every step of the way. Because this book is the roadmap. This book gives you the background. So when I say that the black woman is the best... Some people have a gut wrench reaction to say you're being racist. I'm not racist, I read. I don't think a black person can be racist. I'm not racist, I read. What do I mean by that? I just look at history. I just look at the facts as I've been trained to do as an attorney and I make my decisions based on the facts and what has and what has not worked for us, right? Now that may mean that you have to get a black woman. But I'm not saying that because I hate any particular person. I'm just saying that because I read the facts. Now, if you read the facts and the facts tell you one thing, you would be a damn moron not to go with the facts. Right, Zeke? Right. Okay. So if I read the facts, you know what? Just let me read. I'm going to read you a little half of a paragraph from Chancellor. Listen to this, guys. This is on page 99, middle of the page, second paragraph. He's talking about King Menes, they call him, uh, some call him the Mar, who united the two lands and started the first dynasty and dy dynastic um, Kemet. He was the first to unite the two lands. Well, why the hell do you have to unite them? Let's talk about it. Viewing the outcome from the long perspective of history, Menes' great victory over the Asians, these were the foreigners that had come into Africa, his great 
victory over the Asians, the union, the union of the white and black lands, and the subsequent policy of trying to promote brotherhood through integration. All this turned out to be not a victory for the blacks, but the beginning of their ultimate downfall and almost permanent degradation as a people. Okay, hope I was clear on that. Integration, attempting to allow in foreigners and intermingle, amalgamate, intermarry, and do all of these things was the beginning of our ultimate downfall as a people. Now, this is not coming from Vernon Jackson. This is coming from a studied scholar, Oxford University, the best schools money can buy, spent years and years in Africa, studying what was done to us and studying what happened to us. This is fact. This is not hatred, vitriol, bias, uh, being unreasonable. I'm just going by facts and evidence. If I know that throughout history, integration has never worked for us, why the hell would I try it again? Zeke? No, I'm sure. What's your stance on integration, Zeke? Uh, I don't agree with integration, obviously. Uh, since things have been integrated, we've been, I things like, uh, we're still getting mistreated and we're not equal, but somehow, what I don't understand is this sheet of blindness that's been put over everybody's eyes to make them think things are good, even though it's still right in your face. It's just like the fact that you're so close to him makes you feel like you're equal to him when you're really not. Man, that was phenomenal. He said a sheet of blindness. That's what the hell we have now because nobody in the black community, it's, it's very few people in the black community that are willing to advance a black position. But in BPM, we're not like that. Let me tell you this. The only thing that integration has meant for black people in America is that whereas under outright segregation, you were allowed to have your own businesses, you were allowed to have your own communities, you were allowed to have some separate identity and separate life. Under integration, you don't have anything. You're still going to be at the bottom of the totem pole, but we're going to own your neighborhoods, we're going to control your schools, and we're going to take over your businesses. And that's why even when you go into the blackest of neighborhoods, all of the businesses are owned by someone who's not black. Now, if you haven't visited the hood in a while, come visit. Corner stores, gas stations, nail salon, everything owned by a non-black. That's the only thing that integration is. Stop thinking that integration is about equality. Stop thinking that integration is about being free. In fact, no the hell it's not. It's about them controlling you economically. Now, nah, separation is the only answer. Now let's get back to the topic. The black woman is the best. Zeke, do you believe the black woman is the best? Yes. Why? Because I got a black mom she always stuck by me. A black mom? Mm -hmm. Is that all you got? That's just one black woman. Black sisters, black teachers, everything. And what's so good about them? Like I said, they just stick by you even when you're uh, not doing too well. They just motivate you and help you to do better in every aspect. But well, what about all the black women that I see in the ghetto fights? Uh, those black women have been uh, misled and are brainwashed and very possibly didn't have a very strong black woman to influence them. And that's why they act that way. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I guess he could have gave this whole thing himself. All right. Before we launch completely into the black woman is the best, let's define what a black woman is. And I'm going to tell you what a black woman means to me. i let you, i let Zeke tell you what a black woman means to him. But in my book, I got this written down. The black woman is a black female. Key, there's two things there. Black female. Sorry, Miyakas. <laughs> Hey, you got these dudes that want to be AKAs. Sorry, you don't fit the bill. Okay, born a female who willingly takes on the mandates of African womanhood. Well, what were the mandates of African womanhood? The African women were nurturers, teachers, leaders, helpmates. They were multi-talented. They were the glue that held the family together. And let's just go ahead, I might as well get into it since I started this. What did the African women do? They did pretty much every damn thing. And so I want us to go ahead and acknowledge up front that when I talk about womanhood, because I hate feminists, 
But that doesn't mean I hate women, because those are two different things. Would you agree, Zeke? Mm -hmm. African women ran the marketplace. African women led military campaigns. African women ran countries, right? Uh, this wasn't what the Europeans did. This wasn't patriarchy. We, our women did not have the same issues as the European. They were not degraded. They were not they were not they were not oppressed. They were not kept somewhere in a little room and told to shut the hell up. Our women had power. Our women had autonomy. Our women had freedom. And the nation benefited from it. Right? So I'll come back to that in a minute. But that's what African womanhood is to me. Now anybody who wants to judge black women, that's the next topic. Anybody who wants to judge black women, make sure that you're not judging our women by what hood rats do. As you just told you, there are some women in some uh, negative economic positions who do things that aren't so positive and that seem senseless. Well, they are senseless because they don't have black African sense. There's women who are gold diggers. There's, Euro there's black women with European minds. And most of all, those are feminists. You cannot judge black women by what those people do. Just like you can't judge black men by Young Thug, Lil Wayne, and the average dope boy on the corner. I don't want to be judged by that. So we can't judge our women by that. Right? If we're going to judge the black woman, we got to look at what she will do in the proper environment with the proper ideology and the proper mindset, training and upbringing. So Vernon, what's your definition of black womanhood? What's black woman mean to you? Well, uh, like you said, you gotta be black and a woman and uh, just have have the mindset to be a uh, nurturer, like you said, pretty much, it's pretty similar. And uh, just stick to what an African woman would be like even in modern modern day America, try to live as close to that as possible. And How are they gonna do that if they don't know what an African woman would be like? You gotta do research, study, read, and uh, study. There you go, you gotta study, to know yourself. All right, let me ask you this. I'm gonna go ahead and get on to a controversial topic that's very important to me, feminism. Vern, what feminism mean to you? That's when, uh, the, uh, Females try to do stuff that men would do, or take say there's no such thing as uh, roles and gender and stuff like that. Absolutely, when you try to do away with gender roles. Well, let me tell you something. Feminism does nothing but stunt the building of black families, destroy our economic progress, destroy our political progress, and destroy any steps we might take towards nationhood. That's what feminism does. Well, how? Well, let's define your. Uh, European feminism and that's the only feminism I ever heard of black people tried to grab it and take on to it but it was European every step of the way all right feminism is a European response to European problems that causes unneeded fights between Africans okay that's what European that's what feminism is I'm gonna read this again Feminism is a European response to European problems that causes unneeded fights between Africans. All right, can I explain that? Yes. In Europe, white women were less than animals. Okay, if you go back to ancient Europe, medieval Europe, wherever you want to go. In Europe, black women nurture, you have to read. That's right, Sharina Norman, and she ought to know. All right, that was on, she said that on Facebook, so I guess she on both. But, um... Uh, if you go back to um, ancient Europe, a white woman, a European wife, was less more to her, she was worth less to her husband than his farm animals. He was her property, she had very little value, and she wasn't even his object of sexual affection. Right? Now that's one thing a black man can never get away from. No matter how rough it gets in the house with your wife, at some point you guys gonna want to come back together to have sex. Well, not the Europeans. <laughs> they women didn't even have that advantage because he would rather be uh, practicing uh, pederasty. Now go Google that. Go Google pederasty. 
Now Google it before you ask me what it is, and I you'll see why the women had not even that power. Okay. So if the European woman was treated this way, while Empress Nzinga and Yaya Santewa and our black women were leading nations and leading militaries, if the European woman was being treated this way, while our women were at the forefront, why the hell are we taking on feminism? Right? If we treated our women one way, if every time we had a god, we had a goddess, if every time we had masculine, we had feminine, if every time we had women, we had man, why the hell are we dealing with feminism? Do you see? So feminism is a European response to a, Europe, to a European problem that causes unneeded fights between Africans. That's why I can't stand feminists. Not black feminists. Now I understand white feminists. They have a problem with that man. That man did tell them you can't work, you can't read, you can't go to school. I never told my wife that. Did you ever tell a woman that, Z? <laughs> My wife had money before I did. My wife has a master's degree. I ain't never tell her to quit her job and sit in the house. How the hell am I gonna buy all these guns if I had to pay all the bills by myself? You know what I'm saying? Speaking of guns, we don't have guns on hand today. but well, we do have a few. But we have some alternate weapons. Let's show them, Z. Now we just, you know, in every one of our broadcasts, we in, we include weaponry. And if you're talking about women, you're going to have to protect the black woman. And even if you're a convicted felon, you can get you one of these babies right here. Show them yours, Zeke. Even convicted felons can get these, and they are deadly. Yeah, we've been training on these in BPM. You're going to see some more videos and things coming up. But yeah. We keep some weapons around. Now, tonight we're not focusing on guns, but we had to bring in some alternate weapons because I understand some of my brothers have been convicted. They can't have the guns. So, let's, uh, she said, talk about, he said, talk about these white feminists trying to confuse black gender roles. Well, thank you for that because we were going on with that. Let me go down my checklist, uh, 919 bull, and that's going to definitely come up. Now, I don't want black women to ever feel that they can unite with white feminists. I don't want black women to ever feel that they have any camaraderie with these feminists. And I can base that on a statement by Dr. John Henry Clark. And I want you to go watch his lecture, You Have No Friends. Right? Black people, we have to understand that in this society, in this world, we have no friends. Right? Right? And the only friends we have are in the mirror. So if that's the case, why are we trying to team up with feminists? You cannot fight white supremacy by teaming up with other white supremacists. And white feminists are white supremacists. Can I prove it? Can I prove it, Vern? I believe so. <laughs> Tell me what the white feminist response was to Sandra Bland. Did you hear any? Were they out in the streets? Zeke, did you see them? Uh, it's a woman. They're all about women, right? Well, a woman got lynched. A woman got pulled over uh, from her car for committing no crime. She got beat up on the side of the road and she got found hung in a jail cell a couple days later. And what did the white feminist say? You hear that? <laughs> what, did the, what did the white feminist say? Okay. All right, well, let me ask you another question, black woman, if you want to be down with the white feminists. If the white feminists are really your ally, if the white feminists really support you, if the white feminists are really all about your upliftment as black women, do the white feminists support reparations? Got silent again. Are the white feminists willing to give up their uh, elevated privileged position within white supremacy to benefit your black feminist ass? No. Now, how about that? <laughs> how about that? Are the white feminists 
willing to give up their position and say, take my trust fund, take my college fund, take all the wealth that I inherited from my white racist granddaddy and give it to black women. Are they willing to do that? No, they're not your friends. Okay, well, if, let me ask you this. Howard Zod just said that the black woman has not been under the control of the black man since we've been in this country, right? Because the black man has not had the power. Not the economic power, not the political power. He has not had the power, has he, Zeke? Okay. Well, if the black man hasn't had the power, and so we have not been empowered to uh, subjugate our women, even if we wanted to, then why the hell are you trying to fight me? You should be trying to fight the white man. But that's not what white feminists do. Nah, how about that? If I ever had the power, stop trying to fight me. I didn't enslave you. I didn't rape you. I didn't put you on the plantation. I sure as hell didn't tell you not to go to work. Well, you're fighting the wrong damn person. Nah, we move on from that. Zeke, who are the friends that black people have? Nobody. No. What about Asians? Mm. What about Mexicans? They've been through a lot. Nah. What about the Irish? Zeke is a Conor McGregor fan, so I had to throw that in there. So the white uh, feminists, they're not about reparations. They're not going to give up their positions. And this is another thing that Zeke brought up and my other brother on here just brought up. Feminists, want, and especially black feminists, they think it's one of their main aims and objectives to get rid of all gender roles. Now that's one of their objectives. Zeke, any idea why that might be problematic? Mm, that's a... Uh that's just, it's like the first step and like blurring the lines uh, between a man and a woman. That's, it's like it's letting in homosexual. Well, would open the door to homosexuality, that's for sure. And let me add to that. Black people in America are behind, economically, politically, militarily, we behind. That's not saying we don't have any resources, knowledge, or power because we do. But what I'm saying is we got a lot of work ahead of us to do. Right? And the best way we're going to do this work is in the context of a black family. Right? A black man and a black woman working together to raise a child. That's the best That's the best chance we got. So let me ask you this. Do we have any damn time to be sitting over here arguing about gender roles? Well, I don't think I should have to cook. Shut the hell up. Okay, let me ask you this question. If we have time to go back and redo all the gender roles and get rid of them and restructure them, let me ask you this then. Because I want to know what these women are going to say. If they come banging on my door right now, Joy Zimmerman and uh, Michael Dunn, right? If they come banging on my door right now, but I'm committed to this bullshit, fluidity, feminist, homosexual, Black Lives Matter movement, right? So I tell my wife and my daughter, look, I'm tired of these uh, patriarchal, oppressive, antiquated gender roles. And so you and Journey can go deal with whoever's at the door because men shouldn't have to be pigeonholed as protectors. So you and Journey can do the job that me and Zeke could have did. Who in the hell gonna say that? What? What black woman and her white man want right, to... Right mind. White mind, yes. White mind, she would say that. But in her right mind, who's gonna say that? Some gender roles are oppressive. Yes. Okay, restrictive. And those are European. In Africa, now I have to cite to another book, Hold this Burn. In Africa, if you read Mlamu Baruti, if you read this book, go get it. Amazon, Kindle, you can get it. It's pretty long, but it's very, very powerful. In Africa, our gender roles were based on functionality. What, that, what does that mean? You do what you do best, and I'll do what I do best, and that'll be for the best of all of us. Because the woman can't do the things that the man can do as well, and the man cannot do the things that the woman can do as well. So why in the hell I'm sitting here trying to throw out gender roles and have you doing stuff that I can do better? I'll tell you this. Let me ask you this question, Zeke. Now, I'm going to ask Zeke this question. He only 17. No doctorates. I have 
feminist doctorates can't answer this question because they refuse to answer it. Z, if you're riding in your car with your black wife, right, and it runs out of gas, and your black wife and your black daughter are in the car, your black daughter's eight, no, I make her ten, hypothetically, and the gas station is four blocks up the street, right? Who's going to get out and push that car to that gas station? I am. Not in feminism. <laughs> hey, why would you get, why do you think you ought to get out? That's my responsibility. Why? Is it your responsibility? That's the man. That's just my job. So you trying to say that men have to do certain stuff and women have to do certain stuff? Correct. How oppressive. You're a misogynist. I can't believe you would say some shit like that. No, this is America in 2017, and that woman has just as much of a right to push that car as you. Don't you think? Nah. What's wrong with you? Not if, my, not if it's my family. You damn caveman. <laughs> <laughs> you see how stupid this shit sounds? Yeah. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, man. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, so, it's so ridiculous. Now let me tell you another thing. This is not even on the script. Black feminists, they hate black alpha males. Right? Now, they created this term called hypermasculinity. I'm hypermasculine and I'm proud. Because we need black men to step up and take charge and play the roles that we're supposed to play and be fearless. But black feminists, they hate that. Whenever a black feminist comes upon a black alpha male, they attack him because they are too masculine and their masculinity clashes with the alpha black male. They find a way to nitpick him. I'm talking about personal experience, now. This black male can be proven at what he does, more educated, more qualified, 100% proven the black feminists are going to find a way to attack him and tear him down. Oh, I can't stand them. They deceitful. They don't. They, they they don't want to be. They don't want to do what it takes to work in cooperation with a black man. But most of them never had a real black man. No, almost all of them never had a real black man, and they're one step away from being lesbians. And a lot of them are lesbians. Nah, I'm gonna go ahead and put that out there. The black feminists that I've dealt with that have been harmful, that have been so combative, that have been that have been just deceitful because they don't want to deal with black manhood, alpha males, they have either been lesbians, dibbling and dabbling lesbians, or one step away. Nah. Sorry. <laughs> Had to tell the truth about that one. So did I say enough about feminism? Oh, no, no, no. I got to throw one more thing in there. Two more. Number one, black feminism came from a woman that they call Michelle Wallace. She was propped up as the leader of black feminism by a white CIA agent posing as a white feminist named Gloria Steinem. Go Google Gloria Steinem. She's a white feminist that helped to springboard black feminism. She was working for the CIA. And the reason that she helped to springboard black feminism is because the CIA was working to tear down the black power movement. And they knew that bringing feminism into our families would be the number one way to turn the black woman against the black man. And they knew the black woman and the black man at that time were working together for the civil rights movement and for black power. And they said, we got to find a way to tell, tear them apart. So go Google Gloria Steinem and black feminism. She's a CIA agent. Nothing I'm saying is made up. Right? So why would you want to take some ideology you got from a CIA agent to tear your people apart? And now you so wed to it that you're a lesbian. Damn. <laughs> hey, I see in this meme... Is that how you say it, meme? Or me? How do you say it, meme? I think it's a meme. Hey. It had a black man on it. And the black man was standing there looking strong, talking about, I'm strong, I'm independent, I don't need a black woman for nothing. What? Now, I know this might be politically correct, but I'm going to have to say, what's the younger brother off of Boondocks? Oh, uh, Riley. 
Nigga, is she gay? <laughs> That's the first thing I say. That's the first thing I say if I see a black man say that. I'm strong, I'm independent, I don't need no woman. Hell you need, big fella. I ain't got time for that. Let me stop. I'm getting way out of hand. All right, let me come back here. And last but not least, for all you black women who want to team up with the black feminists, there go Monica Fatea, president of Orlando Chapter of BPM, founder of Queens in Training. That's a real black woman right there. And black women are loyal. I'm going to get back to that in a second, but I got to ask y'all a question. Do white women get hung like Sandra Bland? Do white feminists get hung like that? Be killed like Rekaya Boy? Do they do that to them? Do they beat them up at the Asian stores? Hell no. Okay, that's enough. That's enough about feminism. But anybody who comes to you, right, and they want to take the aim off of black economic, political independence. I didn't say black woman independence. I didn't say black man independence. I said black economic and political independence and self-determination. If they have anything else to talk about, transgenderism, bisexualism, humpbacks, that's what uh, uh, Claude Ennis would say, humpbackism. If they want to talk about uh, the restrooms and letting the little girls go to the boys' room, if they want to talk about saving the damn whales, if they want to talk about animal cruelty, if they want to talk about anything besides black economic and political independence, self-determination, and group self-defense, that's not for us. Now, how about that? You go along with that, Z? What if they're talking about the little kids in Asia that got caught up in the tsunami? No, what about the Mexicans that Trump is trying to deport? Not a problem. <laughs> not, baby! <laughs> not my problem, big fella. Nah, let's move on here. Our next topic. Nah, this is what I want to say. Now, I started off with a story about what I saw a black woman do, but that's what I saw a black woman do for another black man. Can I tell you a couple things that I saw a black woman do for me? All right. I have a black mom. And she raised six children. And if you want to include my dad, that would be seven children that she raised and took care of. Now, what's so exceptional about this black woman? Right? One of my main critiques about these new age black women is that they're too soft on their boys. Not my mom, right? I remember a particular incident my first year at the University of Iowa. It was going into Thanksgiving break, and I called my mom. I was faking just to try to get some sympathy or, or uh, why do you consider us to be the best? I'm talking about that right now. Uh, I'm talking about my mom right now. We got a couple of reasons, not just one. I was going, it was going into Thanksgiving. And I called my mom trying to see if I could get some sympathy. I said, Mom, well, you know, us black people, we say, Ma. I said, Ma, it's tough up here. They got us waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning to train, and then you got to go to class, and you don't get no rest. And it's, it's like slavery. I said, I said, and now that all the other kids are going home, they still not letting us go home. You know what my mom said? You got to do what you got to do. Suck it up. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I thought I was going to get some old well, wishy-washy answer, some old, I'm a baby, I wish, none of that, right? Because the black woman knows the potential of the black man. The black woman knows what the black man can do. And the black woman knows what you're up against. I'm talking about a real black woman now. My mom said, look, son, you got to suck it up, Right? That's it. Nah. Now, what's the fact behind that? Because that's what Dick Gregory said. The black woman is hard on the outside, but she's soft on the inside. I was faking. I was going to come home for Thanksgiving break. I just wanted to see what my mom said. And when I walked through the door, she fell out and almost started crying. She wanted me to be home. But more than she wanted me to be home, she wanted me to be a man. Now, how about that? Make that a quote. 
Cause I, I got a chapter in my book, nothing to show for it, called I Want to Go Home Syndrome. And a lot of these weak ass moms let these boys come home. They earn a scholarship. They know it's too cold up there. It's too hot. They want to come home. They let them. No. More than my mom wanted me to be home, she wanted me to be a man. Which brings me to my wife. Now, I came from poverty, no credit, didn't even know what credit was, didn't even care. My wife, now she came from the hood, but she had a mom who was college educated and worked 30, 40 years as a teacher and did everything right financially, bought and owned everything, and she passed this down to my wife. And let me tell you about my wife. I once asked her, I said, what's the number one attribute that you look for in a man? This is before we was married, because clearly she has no need to be looking for a man while she's married. <laughs> I said, what was the number one thing you look for? She said, I cannot stand a complacent, unmotivated, lazy man who sits around and waits for something to happen. She says, Every man has to be motivated. He has to get out and he has to make what he wants to happen. And as long as he do that, I'm okay. Hmm. I said, that was your number one criteria? Right? She said, yes. You have to be a go-getter. You have to be a builder. You have to be a conqueror. You can't sit on the damn couch and say nobody's not hiring me. Well, once my wife told me that, I knew I had to go do something with my life. <laughs> right? <laughs> because apparently I had lived up to that standard up until that point, but I just knew that was going to be my grade, grading rubric going forward. So I had to go out and start a law firm, start BPM, get some money, stop being broke, stop wasting my money. I had to go out and do some stuff because she just told me that's what she's looking for. That's a real black woman, right? So Z, give us some tips that you got on why the black woman is the best. <laughs> uh, I already said it at the beginning. Go ahead, let me see. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. They the best because um, they drive you, yeah, you to do your best and basically they, they've had um, the black man back for forever. And uh, they bear the burden of the stuff that we fall short on, mm. and they pick up the slack most of the time. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Boy, look here. He just said two things. He said they had our back forever. Now, if they had our back forever, which is true, that lets me talk about Madam C.J. Walker and Ida B. Wells. Now, most people want to talk about Madam C.J. Walker because she was the first self-made African-American millionaire in the country. Forget that. I want to talk about what she did with the money. Madam C.J. Walker. She took the money and she invested heavily in anti-lynching and rights for black people. Did what she did with her money. Now the main person that was lynching was the black man. Now mind you, they did lynch black women too if they got in the way. But the main target was the black man. And when Madam C.J. Walker got all that money, she didn't go do what Frederick Douglass punk ass did and move away and get a white one, well, a white man. She invested heavily in the uplift of our people to stop us from getting lynched. Now, what about Ida B. Wells? No, the black woman not going extinct. I can prove that. I'm raising two of them right now, along with a black woman. But anyway, Ida B. Wells investigative journalist. I'm talking about a fearless woman that said every black family should have a shotgun and every, just like Fannie Lou, that's another one, right? These are black women that were so fearless, and not just like Queen and Zynga, well, Empress, don't let me insult her. They were so fearless that they had the black man's back, like Zeke said, even when the black man didn't have his back. Now, these are the kind of women I'm talking about. He said the black women, the black women that had our back forever. And what, what was the other one? Uh, they pick up slack on stuff. Oh like God, I ain't even got to talk about that. I practice family law. I see what some of these black women are having to go through. Uh, so many of our men are just boys that our women are have to be the man and the woman, and they're doing a good job and not being bitter. 
Right? Nah, it's, it's some black women out there being bitter. You're not going to see the child if you're not with me, la, la, la. They ignorant. I'm talking about these real black women. Even today, even today, it's some real black women out there who will raise the children. Not bad mouth the dad. Let them see the dad. Not take all the credit. And hold everything together. Right? The black woman is the best. Okay? Now let me tell you another example about my wife. When, when I was first coming out of law school, I couldn't practice law. Because they put you through such a background check. And I was up in Iowa in undergrad drinking, fighting, and tearing stuff up. It was like six months. I was just sitting at home working part time. So my wife would say to me, you know, I want to go out to eat. I got friends. They want to go out. They want to do this and do that. I said, look, you can go. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't got no money. Right? I ain't got no money. I ain't going. I ain't trying to front. My wife would make me go out. But before we go, she would give me her debit card. So that whenever it was time to pay, I could pull it out and pay like I was the one with the money. Right? Do you see why I say the black woman is the best? Because in the eyes of the people, it would look bad if she was paying for me. So even though I didn't have anything, I was a little broke, a little broke chump, a little broke chump then. Uh, she made sure that wasn't, it didn't go down like that. And that's a real black woman that ain't looking to try to outshine her man and all these types of things. That's a weird black woman. But I'll give you another example. We started this little program called BPM, as you see here. That's now the most dynamic and impactful in the country. And when I started, I only had about, well, when I started, I had one. <laughs> that was him. After a few months or so, we were up to three or four. But uh, after, after I got up to three or four, I would have to go pick them up to bring them to the meetings. And so... Oftentimes, I was so broke working part-time, just bouncing out of nightclub and other things, that, that, that I wouldn't have any gas money. And so, guess who gave me the gas money to carry on? Right? Not that she had a lot of money, because my wife is an elementary school teacher in the public school system in Duval County. It ain't like they balling, but all I'm saying is that even when you're at your lowest, the black woman is with you. Now, can you say that about another woman? Zeke? No, no. What's that other woman going to do when you get to your lowest? They don't leave. Man, that other woman got, let me tell you what she's going to do. She's not going to even stick around till you get to your lowest. <laughs> soon as you start going down, she's jumping off the train. So I know what a black woman will do, has done, not just in the past, in the present. to my page. I'm going to have to check what's going on now. But let me get um, back to what I'm doing. Okay. Now, so I know what a black woman will do. Zeke knows what a black woman will do. And so we have up close and personal experience on why the black woman is the best. Now, now that I've covered that, Monica says she liked that. Now that's a real black woman. Can I talk about Monica for a second? That's my older sister that Help to raise all of us. You mind if I say something about Monica? I don't want to say something about Monica for you, man. It's probably going to start over after the hour. Oh, 140. Okay, if it start over, that's cool. I want to say something about Monica. I said a long time ago that the only people I know that reflect God the most are black women. And the reason I said that is because this. Now, you talk about a woman that showed me how committed black women will be before my wife could do it because I hadn't met her yet. You should see what my sister did. Oh, my Lord. There were times where we didn't have... There was a time when I first got back from undergrad and I was living with my sister. It seemed like every step of my life I had to depend upon a black woman. <laughs> every step of my life I had to depend upon a black woman. And so we were making things last, just making ends meet. And while we came up short, and we had to find a way to pay the rent, we had to find a way to pay some major bill, 
Man, I remember we found a way and sold the washing machine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nobody got mad. Nobody got frustrated. We was like, look, we got to get by. What can we do? And no need in fighting. Because if we start fighting, it's over for us. We already got our back up against the wall. And see, it seems like when the backs are against the wall, that's when the black women shine through. You ought to plan for when your back is against the wall. That's how you ought to pick your woman. Pick your woman for when your back is against the wall. Because when your back is against the wall, that's when you're going to need them the most. Let me get Instagram going back again here. Monica, let me give Instagram a check in a second to get back on. Okay, they bring them back too. But I'll just say this. If you find a woman like Monica, you need to marry her twice. Because you can never go down again. Because she's going to be there. I'm talking about when you being soft, she's going to be strong. When you being weak, she gonna be strong. And she gonna tell you about yourself too after a while. She'll tell you about yourself. That's one of the greatest women I ever seen. Now, and, and, and Sharina Jamila Norman, that's another one. Now that's the reason, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, because I got enough guns to back it up. Speaking of guns before I say this, I got the Transformer gun right here with me right now. Keltec Sub 2000, 50 round magazine, hollow point, 9 millimeter. I got enough guns and ammunition to say what I want to say. Okay, Serena Jamila Norman was the reason that I said in my last lecture that any man, any black man who abandons his family ought to be killed. Zeke, you with me still on that one? Gotcha. You ain't back down on that one yet, have you? Mm -hmm. Because this is my thing. Now, black women do step up to the plate and play the role of a mom and dad. Black women do go out and provide and come back home and have to nurture and have to teach and have to protect. Black women do do all of this, but that doesn't mean they should have to. Right? And no black man should make one child, let alone more than one, and leave that woman to have to do all this shit. Right? Now, when black women do it, I have to commend them. And especially black women who could do it without becoming bitter. Right? Like Jamila. And still have joy. And still be a, a joy to be around. And take care of her kids. And have to work. And have to do double, triple duty. Then they deserve our praise. But the man who left them to do that deserves to die. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. I would put Jamila in the same boat with Monica and my mom. I would do that. Now let's move on. We to our last. We to our last section here. We to our last section. And so, when I sit here and do all these, say all these things about the black woman, well, what about other women? Could they do it? Are they just as good? Um, they can do the job, right, Zeke? Other women could do it, right? What about the Mexican women? No other woman. Nah. I woke up this morning feeling pretty good because uh, I had a I had a real spirit of optimism and joy because I I woke up realizing that our efforts and our aims were not so far away and that we could make real progress toward them with some very practical steps. If we just got some standards. Irritated Jeannie would say we need to have standards in the movement again. Tariq she would say we need to have a code. We're saying the same thing. If we just got some standards about what we teach our children, what we do as black people and what we don't do, what we say and what we don't say, what we believe and what we don't, we could make an enormous progress really quick. Now, we ain't gonna get all the way there because, you know, Uncle Sam had his foot on our throat since, what they say, uh, Primitive Rock didn't land on us and we, <laughs> we didn't land on what Malcolm said. Okay, but what I'm saying is that there are some very practical steps that we can take. And one of those steps is to teach our boys this, that there's no other woman. 
right? Now, I want to make sure I say that real fast with no hesitation. I'm going to take my hat off. Hold this. Z. I'm going to hold this book and I'm going to hold this one. There's no other woman. All right, Zeke, your turn. Tell her. There's no other woman. There's no other woman. Did you get that? Sometimes you have to repeat things. They say repetition is the father of learning. There's no other woman. What about a mix? There's no other woman. What about a what? There's no other woman. What about a man who just there's no other woman? You should have known I wasn't going to allow that. There's no other woman. There's no other partner. There's no other mate. There's no other counterbalance. There's no other nothing for the black man except the black woman. Anybody confused? If you're confused after that, get off my page. Talking about she's light skinned, mulatto, she mixed, she's Asian, albino. What the hell did Tiger Woods say he wasn't black? He was Canabla. Nick, shut the hell up. There's no other woman who's went through what the black woman has went through. And not only survived what the black woman has went through, but survived it with grace and class. I remember we heard that there was a black, uh, what, what, what do you call a woman who writes poem? A poetress? Poet? And then uh, for woman, it's the same thing. She said that the black woman on the plantation was forced to nurture and nourish and suckle the white babies just long enough for them to get strong enough to go murder her children. Do you see? She was first, she was forced to suckle them, grow them up big and strong, enough to go out and beat and whip and murder her children. Now who the hell else had to go through that? She had to have her baby one day and be back out in the field the next day. Because as blacks, we, did, we were completely dehumanized on the plantation. There's no other slavery but you can point out where the people were completely dehumanized. Meaning you don't have any rights as a human. You're just like a tool or a farm animal. That's what blacks went through. Three-fifths of a man. Your slave owner could kill you at whenever he felt like it, no crime, right? So let me ask you this. If the black was dehumanized that way, and we always know the women got the worst end of the stick, what the hell did they go through? Because on top of being beaten, exploited, and all this, they had to get raped by the master and bear his children. And some of the masters accepted the children, a lot of them didn't. What the hell kind of trauma is this? Right? You should see my wife with our daughters. What the hell kind of trauma was, does a woman go through when they go through nine months of carrying a child? They go through the excruciating pain of labor that a man can't take. And just as soon as the child is old enough, he's taken to another state. Now you talking about trauma. You don't know nothing about trauma. Because that woman got born with that child immediately. Do you see? When they have the babies... They say skin to skin because they start to, they already bonded because the child been inside of them. But then when they come out, they start it all over again. So no other woman been through what the black woman been through. Nah. And this one thing you're going to find, I don't care who has a problem with it. And I believe Zeke would be with me on this. Whenever a black man goes to get a non-black woman, particularly a European, it's just a matter of time before he gives up his black beliefs. It's just a matter of time before she changes them. Because either she's going to take on your mindset, but I already know your mindset wasn't that strong because then you would have had a black woman. So which means you're going to take on her mindset. And think about this. This is the one thing I want y'all to think about. Whenever white people are around, black people have to talk differently. Right, Zeke? Mm -hmm. Well, they don't have to. It's something we just do. We just we, we, we don't tend to say the same things that we would have said if we were just amongst ourselves. We could talk freely. We could talk like Malcolm when we just amongst ourselves, right? But when we get around Europeans, we try to moderate and tone down and, 
and not be so. Well, what if you're living with a European? You can't never say shit. Bro? Yeah. You're living with a European. You can't never speak your mind. You sitting over there, in your mind you saying, I want to beat George Zimbanas the first time I see him. But you living with Europeans, so you have to say, yeah, it was a rough situation. I really wish Trayvon wouldn't have fought. What the hell? Do you see how psychologically it's going to change you? So that's another reason why uh, there's no other way but the black woman. And now, the Bible tells you not to be unequally yoked. Well, black man, is there another person in the world that can understand white supremacy along with you and the struggle that you're facing at work other than a black woman? Zeke, mm. is there another person that can have the philosophical and the ideological approach? No. That's going to really feel you like that? Mm. You come home and say, honey, you know I've been working hard, putting in overtime. I know I have a degree. Graduated at the top of my class. I just don't see why they keep getting promoted and I don't. I think it's because I'm black. Couldn't be. <laughs> hey, that woman gonna tell you couldn't be. Which brings me to something I wasn't even gonna talk about tonight, but the main tool of white supremacy is to make you think you crazy for figuring out white supremacy. That's the main tool. Whenever you say, you know what, I think this is race. Come on, Vern. Stop pulling the race card. Come on, Vern. We got a black president. Come on, Vern. Before you know her, you start to think, yeah, it must just be me. Yeah, I was wrong. They're going to convince you that you crazy. Have you seen Get Out? I've watched it eight times already. <laughs> I might watch it again tonight. So I'm going to close off talking about Jersey Chasers and Star Struck One Nighters. These are individuals that I talked about in my first book. Have me one of them books, man. I talked about these women and nothing to show for. And it seems that when it comes to the black athletic males, the ones that could potentially be very powerful and influential in our community because they, they have the status and our boys look up to them, the European woman targets them. And they target them with a purpose. They're not looking at them as a husband, a dad, uh, uh, to build a family with. They're looking at them as a meal ticket. Right? Nothing to show for it. Go get it on Amazon. The Blueprint for Black Youth Empowerment. Go get it on Amazon. They're looking at them as a meal ticket. And when it becomes apparent that they're going to lose that meal ticket, it's over. I'd rather ruin you. Because I never loved you in the first place. I just saw you as an opportunity. I'm talking as a Jersey Chaser right now, which I could never be. I'd rather ruin you than see you go on and be someone else's meal ticket. And it happens over and over and over and over again. So this is what I want y'all to do. I remember that there was a great running back when I was playing at the University of Iowa. I won't give his name. I'll just tell you he ended up playing for the New York Jets and he played for the Titans, the Tennessee Titans. One of the greatest athletes i ever seen who decided that he was going to have a, some sort of interaction with a white woman. And her name was Christian. I wish I knew her last name because I say that too. Because a lot of these black guys get in these relationships with these Europeans and they think that the racism is dead. Well, that all blew up in his face when the white woman called him a nigger. Oh, you shocked now. <laughs> now you're surprised. You know what I'm saying? But let me tell you what the black women did. Because he had black female friends as well. The black women said, just say the word. And we will go tell her ass up. They were ready to go. Even though he shouldn't have been doing the shit he was doing. They were ready to go. So when I tell you that the black woman is the best, the black woman is the best. I can tell it from experience. I can tell it from both sides of the story. Any way you want me to tell it, I can tell it. And I can prove it. I'm living proof. 
I wouldn't be where I am today as a black man without the black woman. And I don't know how anybody can survive without the black woman. Shout out Melanie Jackson. Shout out Sylvia Laverne Jackson. Shout out Monica Fatila. Yeah. Shout out Janae Jackson. Yeah. Shout out Sharina Jamila Norman. Yeah. You got any black women you want to shout out, Zeke? My and shout out, also shout out my mother-in-law. It's another black woman. I ne always saw on TV that the black mother-in-law would interfere with the marriage of her daughter and her husband and then break it all up. But not mine. <laughs> my black mother-in-law came along to support us in every way. No uh, gossiping and none of that stuff. I'm talking about what do y'all need? Do you need anything in this household? Because I will put up what it takes to help this household. Yeah, that's what the black woman will do. I'm talking about the real black women. So anybody, anybody who has a problem with the black woman, send him to me. No, 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 send him to Zeke. Because I'm too old for all this fighting. I'm 30. <laughs> Hey, remember that coach from Oklahoma? I'm 40. I'm 30. But I got somebody that to deal with him. So, see, what kind of woman you got married? Black woman. What else? As long as she black, she good to go? Uh, black, dark skin. Uh, dark skin? You prefer darkies? Yeah. I got me a dark skin woman, boy. Look here. Then you got that for me, big guy. <laughs> what else? Black, dark skin, what else? Smart. And, uh, Humble. Black, dark skin, smart, and humble. Baby. Well, on that note, BPM this Saturday, 1230, 5000 North Main Street. We're going to be catering to our young black queens. We're, they're going to get their nails done. They're going to get taken out to go do whatever they want to do. We just want them to know that they're special and that they don't have to look to some numb skull for validation because they're real black men and black boys who respect them and value them. And us men, we gotta get it on. We gotta learn God, family, education, community. We gotta learn knowledge itself. We gonna have a good old time. So, uh, donate, tax exempt, 501c3, give it to us, not Uncle Sam, on our GoFundMe. And you can also do it through our, uh, what's the other thing, PayPal, Sadiq, what is it, Sadiq Thomas 23 at gmail.com yeah. to support our efforts. We in Orlando, we in Jacksonville, I'm looking at Tallahassee, and I'm looking at Miami. We're going to take the state. We bring in black youth empowerment nationwide. Now, we wrote the book on it, and we ain't stopping. Black youth empowerment. If it's not specific to the blacks, I don't want it. Anything that's race neutral, throw it in the trash. Anything that's not specific to address our specific needs, get it the hell out of here. This is the John Henry Clark type of program. All right. God bless y'all. Thanks for you tuning in. BPM today. BPM, BPM tomorrow. BPM for life.